China was a communist nation since October 1st, 1949, and still is today, but its dictatorship was almost overturned in 1989 during the Tiananmen Square protest, a protest and later a massacre one step away from becoming a revolution. It all started when Hu Yaobing, a former chairman and general secretary of the Communist Party of China, died. He was more democratic than other leaders and had a lot of support from the Chinese people. During that time, there was also growing sentiment among university students and others in China for political and economic reform. China had experienced drastic economic changes in the 80s, and many Chinese intellectuals were being exposed to Western ideas. Inflation grew over 15% annually, and there was significant corruption in the government. The government had also encouraged students to assume a more active political role, where student-led demonstrations called for more individual rights and democratic freedoms. This was known in China as bourgeois liberalism. On April 22, 1989, the day of the funeral of Hu Yaobing, tens of thousands of students gathered in Tiananmen Square demanding democratic and other reforms. Gatherings then started popping up over the next couple of weeks, with more and more people starting to be involved in the protest. The initial government response was to issue stern warnings against the students, but not take military action against the gatherers in the square. A list of seven demands was then created by the leaders of the students, with their suggestions on how China should be reformed. Their list focused on allowing freedom of press, funding education, and admitting Hu Yaobang's views as correct. The demands were rejected by the government when presented to them on April 18th. The following week, on April 26th, an article was published in China's most popular newspaper, The People's Daily. It issued a front-page editorial titled, It is necessary to take a clear-cut stance against disturbances, branding the students as an anti-party, anti-government revolt. The article enraged students who interpreted the article as an accusation. The editorial backfired. Instead of scaring the students into submission, it antagonized the students and put them squarely against the government. Many citizens also started sympathizing with the students and the size of the protests grew. Mikhail Gorbachev, the Soviet leader during that time, was scheduled to visit China on May 15. And the protesters, knowing his visit would be heavily broadcasted and viewed all over the world, decided to take advantage of their situation. On May 13, two days before Gorbachev's scheduled visit, they declared a hunger strike. By the afternoon, over 300,000 people were participating in the strike. Two days later, shortly after Gorbachev's arrival, a demonstration in Tiananmen Square drew some 1 million participants and was widely broadcasted overseas. Inspired by the courage of the students in Beijing, other cities in China followed, and protests erupted in all but two Chinese provinces, over 400 cities in total. Finally, on May 18th, the Chinese government had to back down, and Premier Li Peng, along with several of the student leaders, met for a televised debate, which did not lead to any successful agreements. On the following day, martial law was declared in Beijing, and army troops stationed the city. However, the army failed to reach the city and clear the square because of severe protests by the students. Military trucks were burned, roads were blocked, and riots started occurring all over the place. This, in return, led to more violence and disorganization between the protesters, and after many threats from the government, on June 4, 1989, the military finally broke in and cleared the square. To do so, violence was enacted, and an estimated 800 to 10,000 people were killed, giving the protests a title of a massacre. At this time, the world-famous image of Tank Man was taken, of a single man stopping 18 tanks for 3 minutes in the middle of the street. In our current time, the Chinese government heavily hides this protest. In fact, the government has so successfully written them out of history... No. No idea? ...that random young people, we ask, uh, didn't no even recognize the most famous Tiananmen picture. Is in... Which country? 
and anyone who speaks of it, broadcasts it, is under danger and forbidden to do so. The Chinese government is afraid the citizens of China will see how close they were to overthrowing the government and do everything to stop them and protect their dictatorship. Thanks for watching.